Good morning and welcome to this edition of Inside Cottonwood. I am Ron Corbin, uh, Cottonwood City Manager. Thank you for joining us. Today we have a special guest. We have Amanda Wilbur, our HR Director. Welcome. Thank you. So uh, we today's topic, uh, we're going to be talking about a, a couple different things, but mostly we want to talk about how to get a job with the city and what kind of jobs we have opening, uh, that we currently have open, and uh, so maybe then maybe some of the benefits of working for the city mm -hmm. and why would you wanna uh, seek employment with us. Um, right now we have lots of, of openings and in the whole community um, in general, we'll talk more about this in detail, it can be hard uh, for organizations to get employees. Mm -hmm. And we're not immune to that as a, as a government agency. We have the same uh, struggles as private employers. We're all competing for mm -hmm. some of the great talent that we have here in the Verde Valley. So so before we get started, uh, let me put you on the spot a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, thank you for being here. I know Good that morning. this isn't your favorite thing. Um, <laughs> not mine either. But but I think it's fair to let the people know the, the quality of the employees we have working for the city, starting with our HR director. So tell us a little bit about yourself. How long have you been with the city? How long have you been in the job? How long have you been in the Verde Valley? Sure. I have been with the city for almost eight years now. Wow. I've been the HR director for almost three years now. Very good. Which time flies. It does fly when you're busy. <laughs> yes, very busy all the time. Um, I moved to the Verde Valley in 2004, so oh, it's been about 16, 16 years. years that I've been here now. That's so. a long time. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we're lucky to have you uh, with the city. So as HR director, uh, you have lots of responsibilities. Mm -hmm. um, you help um, uh, the other departments hire people, mm -hmm. hold people accountable, um, mm -hmm. help with benefits. You also do uh, what, worker, workers' comp and say, tell, mm -hmm. my goodness, tell me, what, what kinds of things is HR responsible for? Well, you hit on a lot of them <laughs> already. Um, most of them surround the staff and, and working with the people inside our organization. So it is a lot of um, recruiting, benefits, things like that. But we also do other things like risk management, safety. We deal with any claims that come in for the city. We work with um, the record keeping of the cemetery. Oh, um, that's right, I forgot else? about that. You were <laughs> responsible for the management of the cemetery. Yeah. That's gotta be a, a, an interesting uh, responsibility. Not many HR it directors do that. Probably not. <laughs> So uh, we do have a really a wide variety of things that we are responsible for. Now, do you work alone? No, I have a team. Um, we have Randy in our office. She's our HR specialist. And then we have Sarah, our admin assistant, who works half for HR and half for finance. So it's a team of two and a half in HR. Very good. So uh, again, today we really want to talk about um, getting a job with the city and talk about some of our job openings. So uh, before we talk about how to get a job with the mm -hmm. city, um, what kinds of jobs should we have open? What's going on in the, uh, the uh, open position realm of your responsibilities? Sure, um, so we can go over the, the actual open positions, but we do have positions that rotate through all the time. So oh. um, you, you never know when something's going to become open because it depends on when someone decides to leave. And we have various types of jobs. We have um, entry level jobs, manager jobs, all levels, all types. Um, right now, specifically, we have an accounting specialist one position, which is an entry level accounting position in our finance department, and that one closes on January 24th. So let me, let me back up there. So let's sure. go ahead and talk about this position because um, the, the finance department's needed some help for a little while. Yes. I think they're going to do some accounts payable. They're going to do some payroll yep. and those kinds of things. So do you have to have a degree to get that job? Um, you don't have to have a specific degree okay. to get that job. Um, it's desirable to have accounting experience. Okay. Um, our payroll system is fairly extensive. Okay. It's, we don't s prepare payroll and send it off. You oh. actually are doing every aspect of payroll, oh. submitting all the deductions. So you really do have to have some experience with that type of work. Okay, very good. So what else we have? We have a library supervisor position open, okay. and that closes um, next Tuesday, the 21st. So, so when you say close, you've said that a couple times now. For sure. those that may not understand, is, is that the deadline or? 
Yes, that is the deadline. So we typically open all of our positions for a, a minimum of two weeks, okay. and you can only apply for a position during the time it's open. Okay. So after the deadline, we don't accept applications anymore until we open the position again. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that, so that's two so far. I'm yes. guessing that we have a few more open. We do. Um, we have um, our communication specialist position is actually still open until the end of January. Then we'll be taking a break on that position. We always need communication specialists. Oh, and what is that? That is a 911 dispatcher. So oh, they work okay. in our dispatch center. And our dispatch dispatches um, PD, fire, and EMS. Sounds like a hard job. It is. It's, it's kind of stressful sometimes. You have to have the right personality to fit in there um, because it is late hours. It, it's shift work. You have a lot of responsibility. You're dealing with people during crisis, so right. you really have to be able to be level-headed and calm and be able to multitask at the same time because you're answering phones, you're typing into the report, uh, into the computer, your reports, you're dispatching the PD or fire out. Um, so wow. there's a lot going on. Yeah, that does sound complicated. Mm -hmm. So how do I how do I get ready to be a communication specialist? I mean, what do you look for? Do I do I have to back, pass a background check or what's involved? Sure. So that process specifically, once you turn in your application and apply, the dispatch center will contact you. We have a um, multi skills test that you have to go through and that tests your computer skills, your typing skills, how you think through problems, critical thinking skills basically. And then um, if you pass that, you have to do a job shadow. So you're actually in the, di the dispatch center. Oh. So you get a good idea of what's really going on in there. So you can judge for yourself too if, if you think you're gonna be a good fit for that right. organization. Um, then from there, we have uh, an oral board process, which is basically just an interview with a okay. panel. Um, and then if you pass that, um, there is a background screening. So it is very extensive. It is the same background screening you would have to go through if you were a police officer. Oh, so I'm guessing then they check for criminal record. They do. Probably drug use, um, yeah. credit check a little bit. Uh, they just do. to make sure you, you are uh, on the up and up being in our public uh, safety sensitive areas. Yes. Oh, wow. That sounds like, an, and you said it's almost always open? Uh, we have a rotating? It, it has been almost okay. always open. Um, we plan right now to close that on the 31st okay. for a while um, so we can get caught up with all the applicants that are currently in process and kind of reevaluate where we're at um, before we repost that okay. if needed. But, but it sounds like it's a uh, law enforcement job. I mean, you actually get it to is. help people. You interact with police officers and firefighters. And, and I know dealing with people in this, the stress is hard, mm -hmm. but I've seen people, uh, the dispatchers get awarded for, uh, um, their, for their um, efforts and for their calmness mm -hmm. and their ability to help people through their crises. Right. I mean, if you want to make a difference in the community, that kind of sounds like a job that might be good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're definitely helping people all the time usually right. in their worst times. <laughs> right. So if you don't want to jump over buildings or fences or right. be chased by uh, dogs or have to fight with people, right. you want to work in an office, but you still want to help people, this right. might be the way to do it. Right. Oh. And and you pretty much have on-the-job training the entire time. So there's, okay. there's not much you have to have um, besides a clean background and, right. and, and your ability to think on your feet and um, multitask, answer phones, things like that. Okay. Um, there's no degree requirement, anything okay. like that. You just have to be willing to learn and they, they give you all the training that you need. Okay, very good. Well, um, before we go to break, we're, um, we were wrapped up so far. We've only got to three positions. I, know. I just <laughs> we, we talk too much, I'm sure. Uh, oh wait, no, we're supposed to, it's TV. <laughs> all right, so we've, we've talked about um, the communication specialist, mm -hmm. library supervisor, and accounting accountant specialist. specialist. All right. So when we come back, we still have more openings. We do. Um, I think that we still have police department. Uh, we have our parks mm -hmm. and recs department, and we have a, a couple others that we'll be looking into. So uh, join me uh, when we get back, and we'll talk with Amanda Wilbur, our HR director.
This is Bruce Morrow, Transportation Manager for Cottonwood Area Transit. Remember, we cover the entire Verde Valley in Sedona. Cottonwood Area Transit has you covered wherever you want to ride in the Verde Valley, all day, every day. Take Cottonwood Area Transit through Clarkdale, Verde Village, and from 26 locations in Cottonwood. With Verde Links, it's a quick and easy trip to Sedona every day. Don't forget our connectors to Camp Verde. Visit CottonwoodAZ.gov for Cottonwood Area Transit and take a seat. Let's go ride. There are people who struggle with addiction and homelessness. Sometimes it may feel like there is nothing we can do to help. But there is. You can make a tax-deductible donation and help those in need transition away from homelessness. When you give someone a handout, you could actually be supporting an addiction. A better life starts with better health, especially for those living in the streets. Support solutions, not addictions. You can make a difference. Visit cottonwoodcares.org. Welcome back to Inside Cottonwood. I'm Ron Corbin, your city manager. Um, we have Amanda Wilbur here, our HR director. Welcome. Thank you. So uh, before break, we were talking about, um, uh, we talked a little bit about you. I know how shy you are, but we talked about you and, and your uh, uh, several years of experience here with the city and, and longtime Verde Valley resident. Um, but then we started talking about the jobs we have open at mm -hmm. the uh, city of Cottonwood. So, so far we've really only talked about uh, three. We talked about the library supervisor, communications specialist, and accounting specialist. Accounting specialist, the one I always forget, Kirsten, our finance director, is liable to be mad at me. <laughs> but um, we, we have several more. So let's start. You told me um, uh, while we were on break, we, uh, utility is, is hiring. What, what, we what do we have in the utility department? So we are hiring for a utility technician, which mostly consists of meter reading. So if you were hired for that position, you would spend three to four days a week usually um, reading meters around town. And then the remainder of your time would be working with the crews, actually constructing some of the lines and doing repairs. Okay, so does that require certification? Um, currently it does not. Okay. However, to move up, you would have to um, get your Arizona Department of Environmental Quality um, Water Operator One Certificate. <laughs> um, the, the reason I ask is I know that periodically we have the level one, twos, and threes open. We do. Um, we had a couple of retirements and people leave, and so um, we've got some opportunity for growth inside we the do. utility department. And I don't think that requires a degree? No. It does not. Okay. Just the certification. So join us. We'll help you get your certification and training mm -hmm. and move up through the ranks in, in the organization. Awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, so that's utility. What else you got? Yes. Um, we have a marketing and public information specialist, which is a brand new job for the city. That sounds exciting. If you yes. so 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 far, if you can work with your hands and utilities, or your mm -hmm. brain in finance, or mm -hmm. if you're creative now. So now the city's hiring a creative position. Yeah. They're looking for a marketing and uh, public, public information officer kind of position. Yep. And I, if I remember correctly, because I, I think that position will work in one of my departments. Yes. Um, it's really um, a multi uh, fos, uh, fa a uh, multi pronged approach to marketing, not just yes. print marketing, but people with experience with um, TV, ads, uh, social media, uh, yes. Facebook, um, Twitter, whatever the young people are using these days, I, I have no That's idea. That's why we need the person to exactly. tell us. <laughs> you, don't want, you don't want me doing uh, social media. And then to help mm -hmm. uh, us uh, message our message a little better about what our council's doing and the work that uh, uh, city is doing out there. And mm -hmm. then the, the last piece of that, that that I'm really excited about will be new is we want to help uh, nonprofits and other organizations with their own marketing because we believe it's, it's connected to economic development. And so mm -hmm. this position will work with um, maybe help the uh, Old Town Association or maybe the the chamber with some of, of their stuff or, or some other groups that are um, focused on bringing people into our community. So it's kind of a way to, to help grow mm -hmm. our tourism base and bring in uh, uh, additional tax dollars to provide other services for our community. So I'm very excited, right. if you couldn't tell, about this new mm -hmm. position um, there. Now, do you remember what kind of degree or what it requires? Um, I should have brought that. I think I might have brought that. I think you do have to have a degree um, for that, but most importantly is the experience okay. in um, marketing itself and um, a little bit graphic design, but that's not necessarily the focus. So okay. um, it, 
we're looking for at least an associate's degree okay. um, that's desired, but any combination of skills, education, and experience okay. that you have could work for that position. Okay, so if you've done marketing for a private company or a business, mm -hmm. that may, we may have an opening for you here. Yes. Awesome, okay, so what else we have? So we also have, now I mixed up my papers, um, a police officer. We have several police officer openings. We've had some retirements lately, um, so we are looking for police officers. Police officers, the law enforcement, uh, one of the most honored and, and uh, uh, trusted positions in the community. We'll, mm -hmm. We're going to give you a, a badge and a gun, mm -hmm. and I think we have tasers here at our community. We do. And so, um, very important position. Um, I consider, I've been here a little over a year now, and I think it's a pretty safe community, and I mm -hmm. give a lot of credit to our police department and our men yes. and women in uniform who keep us safe. So. Now this this one is is hard to get. This is it this is. is not. We don't give these away daily. So, right. um, what do you have to do to get that job, or, or or what qualifications is the city of Cottonwood looking for when they're looking for a police officer? Sure. So to be a police officer, you have to be at least 21 years old. You have to meet Arizona Post requirements, which is um, the organization that basically gives out all the rules for all the law enforcement in the state. So you can actually find a lot of information out about those requirements on azpost.gov. Um, you have to have at least a high school diploma or a GED. You cannot have any felony convictions. And then you have to pass a background, a polygraph, a psychological test, a medical exam, and a drug screen. Wow. So we do have a lot of requirements to become a police officer, but they really do have a lot of responsibilities in keeping our community safe. They, they do indeed, and, and it's a lifelong commitment. Uh, we just celebrated a gentleman who had 20 years with the city of Cottonwood, mm -hmm. and then I think uh, here in a few weeks, we're celebrating another uh, wonderful officer who's uh, mm -hmm. uh, 21 years, I believe, or close to 21 yeah. years of service. Now. What I like to put in perspective, because we're getting ready to celebrate um, another uh, employee's retirement who had almost 30 years, and we'll save that for next month. Um, <laughs> but um, we've only been a city for 60 years. Yes. So these officers have been with the city for a third of its existence. Mm -hmm. And this other gentleman, almost half of the city's existence. I mean, we're a young city, but that's quite the commitment these men and women have given to our community. It is. Wow, it's exciting. So. Um, so let's go back to the police officer real, real quick. So clean sure. background. Yeah. Yes. No felonies. Very clean. <laughs> uh, drug use is probably a no-no. Um, um, and then you got to have the mindset and, yes. and the the uh, the right uh, makeup to wear a badge and a gun. So mm -hmm. do, do you remember how long the academy is and, and, and the training program or process is now that I put you on the spot? <laughs> sure. Um, I believe it's about three to four for months, usually they have, usually we send officers to um, the Northern Arizona Academy. Okay. Um, and, and they usually start in January and graduate in May. Okay. Or start in August and graduate in December. Okay. So we're probably recruiting right now for that August class. We are. Um, and I know that we started a new program with police officers where we can bring them on. And so they come on mm -hmm. um, non-certified, non-sworn, no yes. badge or gun yet. Yes. Um, but you work with police officers, you go through a training program, mm -hmm. and it really helps them at the academy. Right. Um, and so they're earning a paycheck with the city um, while they're waiting to go to the uh, academy so right. um, they can be a part of our family uh, mm -hmm. early in the process. And they also, also get paid during academy too, oh. so if you do start right away, you are still a city employee, okay. so you don't have to worry about not getting you get paid. paid during your training. So yes. you go to school and you get paid. Yes. What a deal, awesome. All right, so uh, before we uh, go on break, what else we have? We have part-time bus drivers open okay. right now, which we are in dire need. Dire need, we saved the, the hardest for the last. drivers, right. Um, it, and to be a driver, you have to have a Class C CDL. You have to have a passenger endorsement because you are driving passengers around. Um, you do have to get a level one fingerprint card. However, you don't have to have any of those things to interview with us. Oh, um, If really? we were to offer you a position, you would have 30 days from that date to study and get your permit. 
um, for your CDL, and then we would be working on your level one fingerprint card with you during that time. So if you're, if you're someone looking for a part-time job mm -hmm. and you don't have your CDL right now, right. you can actually come in and apply, and if you fit the uh, family uh, uh, bus drivers and, and they select you, mm -hmm. we'll give you 30 days to test, to right. study and then right. and test and be approved. And so once you have your permit as well, you would be able to start training with us and we actually let you use our bus to take the skills test because otherwise you wouldn't necessarily have a vehicle that qualifies to take the skills test. Wow. So um, we do help you along the way there. Awesome. So if you're interested, uh, reach out to HR and we'll get into more yes. details in a minute on that. But it sounds like if you're just looking for part-time work and, and I know that we have all sorts of ages there, people who have retired from their first job mm -hmm. and, and are just looking for a little extra work. And mm -hmm. I'm assuming it's up to about 19 hours a week max. Generally, Generally. it's about 19 hours a week. Occasionally it's a little bit more, but okay. we try to stick to between 15 and 19 hours a week. Really? So just uh, one of those, instead of volunteering, maybe right. you want to get paid for your uh, work right. and and I know that I get lots of compliments from our community from our bus drivers so mm -hmm. it's a great way if you like to interact with people and help yes. others we have a, a paratransit where we help mm -hmm. those in wheelchairs who need assistance right. uh, the other day I saw one of the bus drivers get out and help someone get their bike off the front of the the, the bus so that they mm -hmm. could finish their commute so a very helpful group of people who right. who enjoy giving back to our community and getting paid for it yes definitely customer service oriented. Okay, very good. And I think we have one more position we wanted to talk about before we go to break. We do, we have um, a part-time lifeguard position becoming available. It's not currently posted on our website, but it will be in the next day or so. Okay. Um, we definitely need lifeguards um, to lifeguard at our indoor pool. During the summer, they also lifeguard at our outdoor pool, but primarily now we're looking at the indoor pool. And because our indoor pool is so shallow, we've actually modified some of the requirements and we are offering a shallow lifeguard certification, shallow water lifeguard certification, which makes it a little bit easier for people to get in the door there. Okay, so if you don't like the deep end, but you right. can swim, you know, you're, you're right. capable of swimming, you just don't like the deep end or that responsibility, mm -hmm. um, you can uh, get this modified, uh, uh, certification so that you can yes. be a lifeguard. Now, uh, another question about the lifeguard, what hours, because is this, w when is our pool open or what, you know, because I see kids there in the afternoon, but I'm assuming we also need them during the day? Sure, our pool opens at 7 a.m. Okay. and closes at 8 p.m. on most days. The weekend hours are a little bit shorter, okay. um, but we definitely need lifeguards for the morning hours. Okay. I know a lot of our lifeguards currently are high school students, it, they can't be there in the morning. Well, no, um. <laughs> teachers, we, we're not asking them to skip class to come work at the, the uh, rec, rec, recreation center, so right. we need some adults. We do need some adults or people with flexible schedules um, to work some of those morning hours primarily. Okay, so we gotta go to break before uh, I, I get in trouble here. Um, so we've gone through a lot of, of, of positions opening, all mm -hmm. sorts of levels, skill sets, from degrees to non-degrees, entry level to maybe a little more advanced. When we mm -hmm. get back, let's talk about the process and how you get a job with the city sure. of Cottonwood, and then um, we'll wrap it up with why you would wanna work for the city of Cottonwood. So we'll be right back. Attention Cottonwood residents. If you've been a Cottonwood resident for a year or more and are at least 18 years old, you could run for the Cottonwood City Council. The Cottonwood City Council makes policy decisions and is empowered to enact ordinances and policies to protect citizens' rights in the city of Cottonwood. In the 2020 election cycle, the citizens of Cottonwood will elect a mayor and four council members. If you want to be a part of the Cottonwood City Council, now is the time to contact the Cottonwood City Clerk's Office for more information. Qualified electors can run for mayor or council seats, and all forms and petitions are due by April 6, 2020. Contact the Cottonwood City Clerk today at 928-340-2727. The City of Cottonwood, inspiring a vibrant community. Welcome back to this edition of Inside Cottonwood. I'm Ron Corbin, your city manager, and we have Amanda Wilbur, our HR director. 
Amanda, when we left, we were talking about the lifeguard position. Uh, mm -hmm. I forgot to ask, what are the qualifications to be a, a, a lifeguard? Sure, so you have to be at least 15 years old to be a lifeguard with us. You have to be able to pass a drug screen for us. You need to be able to swim at least 100 yards, which to put that in perspective, in the indoor pool, that's about five lengths of the lap lane area. Um, you have to be able to do a time drill, which is swimming 20 yards, picking up 10 pounds, swimming it or walking it back to the other end of the pool. You have to pass a written lifeguard test and uh, the skills test and of course CPR and first aid. Okay, do we offer any of that training? We do, so you can um, interview, apply an interview with us, okay. and then we will be holding a class which would be free to anyone who wants to work for the city. So we will, we don't have dates set for that yet, okay. but we will hold the training. So we hire you not qualified and we'll mm -hmm. help you get qualified. Yes. Well, that's awful generous. That's awesome. Well, very good. So we've talked about a lot of positions. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to run out of time before you know it. So <laughs> I want to talk about the process. Sure. Well, can you talk a little bit about getting a job with the city of Cottonwood in general? Sure. So we post all of our jobs on our website. You can get to it um, under the how do I section of our website and you just click on how do I apply for employment opportunities. You can also get to it from the HR page on our website. Um, from there, we list all of the current openings and we have an online um, application process that we use. So once you apply and the position closes, our hiring team evaluates all the applications received, invites applicants to an interview, once we do the interview, we either make you an offer or let you know that you weren't the person selected at this time. Yeah, that's always a hard part of your job is. Is, is giving bad news. And and you know what's sad often, at least when I was uh, in your shoes, is you were turning down qualified people. Yes. I mean, it's not uncommon to have several quali qualified people. And they're mm -hmm. like, well, I'm qualified. Right. Um, it's just very sad that uh, we you know we can only hire usually the number of positions we have open right. one. So, and part of the reason it's sad is it's a great place to work. It is. So it is. why would someone mm -hmm. want to work for the city of Cottonwood? What do we have to offer? Well, we have lots of things. Um, we have a great benefit plan. Okay. Um, we have great working environment. Okay. I think everyone here is really um, focused on teamwork, working together. Um, going back to the benefits though, that that's something that a lot of people really look for. So um, we participate in Arizona State Retirement okay. System, which is a great benefit to us. Um, the city pays for health insurance premiums for, in, for employees and offers um, subsidized dependent insurance. Okay, so just so that we're sure. clarified, let's back up because these are these are things that you don't always get from private employers. Right. So when you, you talk about the retirement system, this is a pension. So 20 plus, 25 years with us, mm -hmm. and then you would get a pension from the state. Now you contribute, I think right yes. now it's almost 12% of is. your salary, and then the city matches another 12%. Mm -hmm. Now then for law enforcement, firefighters and police officers, we have the uh, uh, P, PSPRS. There you go. Yes, Thank you. Public Safety Personnel Retirement System. So they have their own system and they, they contribute to that also. So it's they not a, a give me. And really mm -hmm. we're mandated by the state on what the city co contributes right. to that. But then they contribute. And then you talked about the health benefits. So yeah. uh, the city offers for employees only a basic uh, plan that is no cost to them, basically. We do. But then there's a deductible and, and, and a premium, and those, but there's no right. monthly uh, deduction. And then we help offset the cost of dependents, um, depending. Two yeah. great benefits. What else What else do we have? Um, we have vacation time. which is We love vacation time. <laughs> we do. Um, Full-time staff get a free membership to the rec center. Okay. Part-time staff get half off a membership okay. to the rec center. Um, and, and those are our basic right. um, benefits there. And then you get great bosses. We have a lot of uh, great bosses, shown by the number of people that um, have 20 plus years mm -hmm. of um, experience working here for the city and mm -hmm. and uh, it, it is great. One of the unique things and people like, uh, I hear periodically, 
I don't want to work for a council, you know, the elections and whatnot. And most employees don't work for a council. There's mm -hmm. only four employees that work for the council and the rest work for the city manager. Right. And the last city manager was here 10 plus years. The one before that was here a long time. So it's a, it's actually pretty stable. It has um, been. Comparatively mm -hmm. speaking, I've, uh, you can Google and there are some cities that uh, it's not quite so stable. <laughs> Cotton was just a great place to live and work. We have lots of opportunities, firefighters, police officers, mm -hmm. our recreation center, our library. Mm -hmm. We offer transit services. Mm -hmm. We have administrative services. We have public works. We have engineers that work for the city. It's just, it's mm -hmm. so diverse and so complicated depending on your perspective. But mm -hmm. uh, uh, we're about out of time. So sure. I did not give you this question, <laughs> so I'm going to put you on the spot because I always do. Our motto is inspiring a vibrant, vibrant community. Mm -hmm. So what does inspiring a vibrant community mean to you? Well, I think it, especially from my perspective in my job, it means helping our community really thrive, you know, um, helping them with their uh, employment options, opportunities, and then within our, our city, I feel like it's helping the other departments get what they need so they can, you know, reach out to the community and do their thing. So I really feel like even though I work with the community, I'm more behind the scenes helping the other departments get be successful. Yeah. Yeah. The more successful they are, the better you've done your job. Yes. Well, Amanda, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. And that wraps up this edition of Inside Cottonwood. I'm Ron Corbin, your city manager.